before I actually be begin, I'll show you guys Aquila. <laughs> oh, big sigh. Aquila is in a cone. <laughs> I feel bad for her, but also Akila being in a cone is just one of the funniest things because she is so expressive and <laughs> I love you so much. But she formed some hot spots on her, on, on either side of her tail and so she could not leave them alone. So as I'm cleaning them and putting ointment on them, she needs to have her cone on, otherwise they just get worse. Good morning, everybody. I have a really exciting day today because I think this type of content is incredibly valuable for this type of lifestyle. You are, oh. <laughs> do you wanna come on in and say hi to everybody? Cause they, at this point, they haven't seen you in a long time. Kobuk, you're getting hair in my coffee, dude. Me and Kobuk are just creating issues for the day of the kilo. <laughs> that big tail, me saying bye and I love you. So I'm going to the gym. I still have cinnamon rolls to work off from <laughs> off grid. That's true, we both do. So, at the end of today, I will be able to say that my solar setup is 100% complete. I will not have to make any more changes after today. It has been almost exactly three years since I installed my very first solar part on my van. I know that many of you have not been with me through the entire van build and all of my travels since, so I do want to break down um, where I started, the changes I made, and and then I'm going to share with you the very first big change that I'm making today. Three years ago, I purchased this van. I was very much on a budget. I did the entire build by myself. I knew absolutely nothing about solar. I started with a solar kit. I installed two. 100 watt solar panels on my roof and I had one deep cycle gel battery in my van. At that point, the only appliances that I was running were my lights, my fans, and my fridge. Because I had such limited power for the first like year of living in my van, I relied on portable power to charge any of my AC items really. Because every time I would click on my inverter and charge something through AC, it just, it just pulled so much energy out of my single deep cycle gel battery and I quickly learned that it just wasn't worth it. So I very rarely used my 1000 watt inverter that I had initially installed. I really came to love that system where I utilized my portable power station for, you know, my computer, my camera batteries, my GoPro batteries, my coffee grinder, and then the solar that I had installed directly into my home, into my van, that was, was solely for the appliances in my van. Fast forward a little bit, a year and a half ago, I decided to install a freezer in my van. So I decided to upgrade my, my system and upgrade my batteries. And this was a huge task for me, not only the work to put it in, but also the understanding of how everything fit together and I ended up upgrading to two Battleborn batteries and they have made just the biggest difference in my life. Wow, this is so freaking exciting. Oh, yeah. oh. <sighs> All right, I'm going to, I wish, you know, if I were to go back to the very first solar install that I did on this van, I wish I would have just invested that money up front and went with lithium ion batteries but um, I didn't, and so I learned that later. So I upgraded to two Battleborn batteries, and I added a solar panel. And a new wave of learning occurred. I learned that winter months are tough on my freezer because of limited sun. I also learned that my initial fuse between my batteries and my electrical system running to my appliances was getting stressed. And this brings me to the very first big change that I'm making today. I am completely removing my 1000 watt inverter. One of the reasons that I feel so confident about just completely removing my inverter altogether is because I have also upgraded my portable power station, which brings me to today's sponsor. And I want to remind you guys that it is companies like this that I love and trust and use every single day, which really help me bring you quality videos every single week. So thank you to Blue Eddy for sponsoring today's video. I am so excited to share this product with you and how I'm using it, how it's integrating into my life and why this allows me to kind of complete 
my solar setup hopefully forever <laughs> so we are going to go over the blue eddy first and how it integrates so beautifully into my life and then we're going to get in the back and i'm going to walk through all of the work i'm doing on my system back there which i'm a little nervous about i always am this is the blue eddy ac 180 and it is my new roommate. There are a few reasons why I decided on the AC 180 and there were a few non-negotiables when it came to selecting my new portable power station and I wanna get into those because I know for many of you living this lifestyle, there might be some things that you haven't thought of before that really play a huge role into why this is here today. <laughs> This is 1800 watts. My old portable power station was 1000 and this is not much bigger than my old one. There's also no special adapter needed so I just have three cables for the three different ways to charge it. It can be charged via AC, so an outlet. It can be charged via 12 volt in your car. This is what I really like to rely on. And lastly, it can be charged via solar panel which we will get into in just a few minutes. As for the non-negotiables, I'm going to start with the less obvious one. I refused to have a power station with a handle up here. This flat area is so useful. It still has handles on the side so I can carry it and transport it very easily, but I can now use this as the area to place the things that I'm charging. So my computer sits up here, my AirPods sit up here. I can now simply just use this to not only charge my computer as I'm working, but use it as a little table for my coffee and my notebook. My second non-negotiable is that it needed to charge really fast. This AC180 charges to 80% in 45 minutes. Not to mention that 80% charge will last me a few days because this is 1800 watts compared to my old 1000 watt. This is a lithium ion phosphate battery, which means it has a long life and high temperature resistance, as well as being durable and safe. Not to mention this really neat little feature of a wireless charging pad on top. After a few months of weighing my options, Blue Eddy became my top choice for a less obvious reason. About a year and a half ago now, I rebuilt a section of my van to fit a 60 liter freezer so I would have a place to store my fish, eventually my venison, and other ethically sourced meat to avoid supporting factory farming and to avoid running into town as much. But during the first year with my freezer, I learned that the winter months were not its friend. Therefore, when considering this upgrade, I needed something a bit larger, very efficient, and with the ability to use as backup when my fixed solar system is struggling. I am so happy now that I am at the ready with my Blue Eddy AC180 as backup for my freezer during the winter months when the solar on my van has limited sun. I have also upgraded my portable solar panels and I am equally as excited about this. My old solar panels were individual 100 watt panels. They were pretty heavy and over the last year they've really slowed down on their charging capabilities. Also when you live in a tiny space, so my van is a 136 wheelbase, it is a very short van, which means that any open space is usually utilized for a specific thing. And that includes my new Blue Eddy 200 watt solar panel. This thing is streamlined, it is beautiful, it is light, and I freaking love it. The design is just so nice. There are two clips that hold it together and there's this nice pouch in the back that holds the cables. 200 watts. So I wanna show you the design of the stands that hold up this portable 200 watt solar panel. So my old solar panels were fixed. The feet only had one option. You either put the feet out and that was the angle that it had to the sun, or you laid them flat on the ground, which never works really well anyway. These are adjustable. This strap can be adjusted to change the angle. So for somebody like me who lives full-time in their van, I deal with various amounts of sunlight throughout the year. Just this little feature alone is a game changer. I hope that many of the features and things that I just talked about really help you make a good decision based on your rig and your lifestyle because there are so many features and amazing things about this product that I didn't know would make such a big difference if I hadn't already been living in my van for a few years. So make sure to head to the link in my description below and check out the Blue Eddy AC180 along with this beautiful solar panel that is perfect for my life on the road. And with that, let's start making some changes.
the very first thing that I'm doing is removing the, the solar panel connection to my charge controller. So I'm completely taking those out. The reason for that, and I've said this in every single video, the last thing that you want is for your solar to be going into your batteries with nowhere for that energy to go. Sweet. This is the positive end to my solar and I am going to wrap this up really well. And some of this stuff might be overkill. I'm working with DC, which is typically not very dangerous, but for somebody that's not really familiar with solar and is like, I'm kind of uncomfortable with this kind of stuff still, even though I'm learning and I'm pushing myself to do it anyway. Um, I'm just very, very careful. And this is my negative. This was just as simple as taking that flathead screwdriver and loosening up these two screws and pulling out those cables. And it's labeled right here, so I did nothing fancy. I just knew positive, negative. Next, I want to remove the connection from batteries to system. Since I'm working on this system, I wanna remove that inverter. So I am going to disconnect this positive cable running from batteries to this fuse. There's some warping in the middle of this fuse and I will explain that when I change the fuse. Um, but for right now, I'm just gonna disconnect that so I can take care of removing that piece of equipment that I don't want anymore. All right. Connection from batteries to that fuse is done. I also uh, electrical taped that just to be safe. And now I have no energy going to my system. And I can remove the big cables for my inverter. Yay. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace this bus bar cover. Well, they certainly aren't loose, that's for sure. Done. Oh my gosh, that feels so good. I don't know what's going on here. Okay, it's out. And boy, does this bring back memories. <laughs> um, this is a perfectly good 1000 watt inverter. I still have all of the connections, of course, and I hardly used it. So I am going to offer this to my patrons first. Um, I know that there are some people on there that could use it. I guess this is kind of a shameless plug for my Patreon as well. I try to do some more, uh, real-time life updates over there, different pictures. Um, I like to do lives with patrons as well. If you wanna support me over there, feel free to head to the link. I'll, I'll put it in the description box below. Absolutely no pressure, but I am going to post this over on Patreon and see if anybody could utilize it for their own build or tiny house or whatever. Um, so hopefully this can still live a long life after me. Now for the other two changes that I need to make. The fuse that goes between my batteries and the rest of my system has been a little stressed out. So when looking at it, oh gosh, the, the middle of the fuse, the little wiggly part is warping a bit and that freaked me out. That fuse is from my initial 200 watt system. So it's only 20 amps. And when I added a panel and then also added my freezer, I did not change my ANL fuse which I should have. For my new fuse, I went with the Blue Sea Systems 40 amp ANL fuse. Now, you might be wondering, Linnea, how did you know what amp fuse to upgrade to? And that is where my friend Eric comes in. <laughs> Last fall, I met Eric in Colby, and lucky for me, Eric does consulting calls. I booked a time with Eric, I think it was like 45 minutes with him, and that's, that's all I needed because I had so many questions about my electrical. I feel so confident after talking to Eric. I will put, um, obviously their handle here, I will put their blog below because they share an immense amount of information on their blog about van building techniques, things to use, things not to use. They really cover it in depth for those that want that information and that is a lot of us. I really, really, really wish their blog was available when I was building my van. But lucky for me, I just now have Eric so I can pay him for his time. And then I have this bad boy to talk about. This will be the third upgrade for today. I'm just gonna disconnect this one over here. Take this off. I'm gonna remove this fuse and just replace this one exactly how it was on. Boom. This one is so, so much flimsier. So I'm gonna reconnect this washer, funky washer. And then this will be tightened down once I reconnect my batteries to my system, which I'm not ready to do yet. So this was my 20 amp anal fuse. 
and if you can see that middle part now that it's catching the sun um, you can see that the wiggly section is just getting a little funky and the wiggly section getting a little funky was what I was worried about this was my main question for Eric and he did an absolute beautiful job answering it and making me understand what the heck was even going on all right fuse changed that feels so good okay now to the thing that I'm most confused about I have no disconnects in my solar setup and I've learned over the years that this is uh, kind of dumb actually bad move on my part but I'm adding one today I am just going to be adding the disconnect solar panels to system because I have found that when I have to work on my solar my batteries or my um, fuse panel or whatever that every time I have to unscrew and take out my solar panels from my charge controller and instead of messing with that I can just shut them off and then I have no power running into my batteries. Eric and I talked about going with just a, a classic like almost like a dial disconnect um, but he ultimately thought that this which is called a A double pole circuit breaker because when I added my solar panel on my roof I added it in series so I have three 100 watt solar panels connected in series which means that their voltage adds up so I am bringing in about 60 volts so that's a, a higher voltage than normal than you would if you had it in parallel or less panels or whatever it's just a higher voltage I don't know how else to explain it because quite honestly I don't understand it that well but I do understand that in series they add up higher voltage cool he suggested that I get the 20 amp double pole circuit breaker and I got one that came with the din rail which is just how it connects to this box and it's protected and I have space for this up up above here and this is the din rail and this is just the protective box, but this is how it attaches. It's raining and all of my stuff is out here. So I'm gonna put this tarp over me. <laughs> nice. The right side will be positive and the left side will be negative. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my cables right now, which is the thing that I'm most worried about which I shouldn't be. And I do have it on off because that also makes sense to me. All right. Okay, let me go. How'd it go? Good, it was just the negative, so it's okay anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! All right, so this one is stripped and I am going to go ahead and put it in here. Since I have the rest of the wire, for my negative. I'm gonna go ahead and um, strip this and this will insert on the bottom side, just like the opposite of where I put the, the top part of my negative. And I'm just gonna take care of this now so I don't have two random pieces of wire laying around that could get mixed up. Now I'm doing that exact same thing to the positive. All right, I have my solar cables coming in. Negative is on the left, positive is on the right. They are not connected to my charge controller yet because I have not reconnected my connection from battery to that fuse that I changed. So I need to go ahead and do that first and then I can connect my solar panels back into, I guess technically now I have a circuit breaker so the fact that it's off means that I don't have to worry about that anymore, but just to be safe. I'm going to reconnect this fuse. So this is what usually makes a spark and it freaks me the f out. Ah! Ah! Alright, it's all okay now. Reconnected. So the last task is for me to reconnect my cables into my charge controller. There we go. This is going into positive. Right there. 
Okay, my, my electrical, I think, is completely finished. My 20 amp ANL fuse has been upgraded to a 40 amp ANL fuse. I removed my inverter and the wires associated with it, and then my circuit breaker is fully installed with the cables running back into my charge controller. It just is not on yet. So I am going through the four little screws right now, making sure that all of the cables going in and out of my circuit breaker are super tight. Then I'm gonna turn them on and uh, hope for the best. I'm getting 19 watts. Woohoo! It's working. My voltage is at 26. Good work, babe. Look at that fancy son of a gun that I just installed. Oh, the like weight is just lifting off my shoulders being done with all of that. All right, everybody, my solar is 100% complete. I am so happy with the changes that I made. I feel just a lot more confident using all of my appliances at once as well. And I feel like at this point, like I can officially say that there are no other changes that need to be made to my solar. I think it is exactly the way I want it, that it suits my lifestyle beautifully, and I have everything I need in the van. I don't think I will need to add another battery or another solar panel or anything. I'm good, like I'm set. And it only took three years to get there. <laughs> I hope that this also helps you with your own system if you are working on it or making decisions about it, um, whether you're in the first part of your build or three years in, like me. I love my system and ultimately while you're on the road you will also be able to figure out what's best for you and what you actually need and what you actually don't. And with that, Akila and I have a really exciting video coming up next week for you guys. Returning to special places is always really fun. So Akila and I will see you next week in the Northwoods. Akila. Oh. Hi, oh my gosh. Kobe's. <laughs> Want me to put him inside or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just put electrical tape around this. Why? Because it made me feel better. Does it actually do anything? Probably not. What? I couldn't tell you. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> I think we're okay though. I feel like that would be the kind of alarm for like a zombie attack. What are you doing, babe? Just watching. You're gonna make fun of me. It sparks every time and it freaks me out. I wouldn't make fun of you. Stop! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Shut up! No, it's supposed to go like that. Are you sure? Yes, because I did it. What are you doing? I'm watching. Why? Babe! <laughs> you are not allowed to be out here while I work on my electrical. <laughs> you just don't like that it sparks. It makes me feel like it's gonna blow up. It's definitely not gonna blow up. <laughs> I will never be an electrician. This should go super smooth. But it never goes smooth when I see that. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. Oh, the good.